Many years ago, I <laughs> took the ether waves. I always had one and a spare, but that's another story. I took the ether waves and I drilled holes in the top so that I could gain access to the calibration points inside the theremin. Rather than have to take the cover off and on and off and on, I drilled these holes so I could have access to the volume oscillator, the fixed frequency oscillator, and the variable frequency oscillators. This enabled me to do a number of things. Many times I would go to a venue and the theremin would have a zero beat point that was really almost inaccessible and I was able to take the little tool that Moog provides for you and stick it right down inside and make my adjustment. I was also able to increase the octave range. That's for another video. But I was also able to adjust the volume oscillator so that I could get cleaner articulation I was able to use the adjustment to make sure that I could more easily play rapid note runs. And I'd like to teach you how to make that adjustment. But before we even start, when we get into these access points to the calibration of these three inductor coils, remember what the user manual says. It says that if you damage the theremin, while you're in the process of making these adjustments, you have voided the warranty. So, tread lightly. Do this. Take it under advisement. Ignore this video if you don't want to risk it. I've been making these adjustments for well over a decade, and I'm sure that I can help you through them. Now, we're going to talk about the volume range knob on your theremin. Undoubtedly, you've got the theremin, you've been playing around with it, and you've probably noticed that if you have the volume range knob all the way counterclockwise, the volume sounds softer. And if you turn it all the way clockwise, it sounds louder. But there's other things happening too. Three things happen. Number one, from counterclockwise to clockwise, it goes from slightly softer to slightly louder. Number two, it also changes the response off of the volume loop. You will notice that the further clockwise you turn the knob, the sharper the response is. And the further clock counterclockwise you turn the knob, the softer or more indefinite the response is. And you're also doing a third thing, which is you're actually changing the size of the control space around that volume loop. Now, by default, if you take a look at this, Moog has pretty much set the... Whoa! Moog has set it so that if you turn it all the way clockwise, turn your volume range all the way clockwise, and take a look, the threshold is very close to the volume loop. Oh, what do I mean by the threshold? All right, very quickly. If my hand is the volume loop, and I put my fingers right near the volume loop without touching it, and I begin to lift up, there will be silence up to a certain point, and then a noise will be made. Sound starts. The point right at which silence ends and sound starts is what I call the threshold. And by default, the threshold on a Moog theremin in its factory setting is about, and it's a little difficult to see height here, is about a half an inch, maybe three-eighths to a half an inch high off that volume loop. What does that do? It gives you a very sharp response. I can still go soft aloud. If I turn my volume range knob all the way counterclockwise, look, it has changed where the threshold is. The sound is definitely softer. The response is a little bit less defined, but now my threshold is about an inch to an inch and a quarter above that volume loop. But here's where the issue lies. If you're want, wanting to play something very rapid, and you don't want to have to lift your hand up and down so fast, and you want much cleaner articulation, it's very difficult to do so without hitting that loop. So by making an adjustment on the inside, we can raise the height of that threshold to about two and three quarters to three inches. 
to do something very specific, which I'll show you. In order to do this, and make this adjustment, put your volume range knob with the little white dot in the midnight position. This is a position where when we make this adjustment, you'll have more leeway from counterclockwise to clockwise and back and forth, and a little bit more range. Now, if you saw the last EtherWave video, we dealt with removing the plastic insert that gives you access to the calibration points. If you're having trouble removing this plastic insert, you can do so without breaking it. Go back and take a look at the last EtherWave Issues and Answers video that I did, and you'll see how to do it. In the old ether waves, the old standards, in order to make a change to the volume inductor coil, you were to use the little hexagonal end of this tool that they gave you. But in the new ones, there's this opposite end, which looks like a small, thin screwdriver blade. And that's the end you want to do. Now, we don't just put it down inside the hole, because if you do that, you're going to be searching around, searching around to get it to fit inside. My advice to you here is to use a flashlight, a pointer, anything that you can illuminate the inside with. And you'll have to hold it as a pretty strange angle to do it. But once you do, you'll be able to see the position of the little slot that this will fit into. You'll be able to see the position of it and approximate that position so that as you go down inside, you're going to be able to fit it without too much manipulation right into that trim pot. And you'll know that you've hit it because you'll feel it catch. Do not make any drastic turns, okay? You just want to get it seated. That's all you need to do. So. Now, so now that we have it in there, take a look at what happens. In the user manual, it describes what's going to happen. As you turn the tool counterclockwise, it's going to get louder. I'm going to unmute it. Now here's how we do it. Use your pitch hand. You can even use your elbow. I'm going to turn it counterclockwise. Listen to what happens. It's getting louder. I'm turning it slightly clockwise, and it's getting softer, all right? What we want to do is change the size of the threshold. That is, we want to raise the threshold to about two and three quarters to three inches, and here's how we do it. We turn the tool clockwise. Use your elbow to make a pitch. Very, very small increments. Turn it. Look at what's happening to the threshold. I'm now as close as I dared get to the volume loop before touching it. And watch how far up. There it is. About two and a half to three inches. This and that's all I need to do. It's that simple, but it's a very, very subtle adjustment. Now, instead of having to go like this, I can now... I can move through the threshold. I can adjust it slightly now simply by using the volume range knob. I can make it a little sharper. That shrinks the size of the threshold, but it still gives me a nice sharp response. And if I go all the way counterclockwise on my volume range knob, threshold is now about four to four and a half inches, but by keeping it in the midnight position, it enables me the best of both possible worlds as far as what I like to play. That's how you make the adjustment. It's that simple, but it's also that risky. So be very careful when you do it. Take a look down below in the description and you'll find a link that will help you learn more about playing through the threshold and you'll also see an example of it, of using that threshold for very, very rapid notes. So, once you're done, remove the tool, replace the plastic insert. Here's the EtherWave. I have attached it as tightly as possible using 
the mounting plate slash mic stand adapter that comes with it. It's attached to the underside of the theremin. Once you've attached that, you attach the theremin to the mic stand. You can do it one of two ways. You can either attach the mic stand adapter mounting plate to the mic stand and then set the theremin down on top of it and screw those bolts in. Or you can do what I prefer, and that is keep the mounting plate secure to the bottom of the theremin and then screw the mic stand right into it. But I've done it as tightly as possible. That's the point. Watch. I still have a good amount of instability and I wondered what to do about this. I tried different methods of tightening and none of them worked. And just as I figured out what we could do with the Clara box, the same thing applies to the ether wave. Take a look in close up. Another innovation happens at the underside or the bottom of the ether wave. Those of you who have standard ether waves and those of you who may have seen one recall that the post in the mic stand simply was affixed to a central hole right on the bottom of the ether wave. This innovation has two entry points for two bolts. Those two bolts are seated into this mounting plate mic stand adapter that comes with it. And you'll notice just as <laughs> with any mic stand, there's a central hole here where the post of the mic stand goes. Ostensibly, this double bolted system is going to stabilize the theremin more, give you more of a tight fit. But if you take a quick look, look at these two bolts. They screw in from the underside and there is attached to these bolts what looks to be a neoprene or rubber washer. However, when you press the screw all the way up, take a look, there's a recess. In other words, space between the bolt and that washer surface on both sides. So when I push this in and screw this down into these, po into these post holes, if those washers are not pressed against the theremin as tightly as possible, there's going to be a little bit of instability. And when I put the mic stand through the central post, it's going to pose the same issue of instability. Well, the cure for it is the same as the cure on the Clarivox. All you need are two 5 16th inch washers, rubber washers. Place them down into the recess. And now take a look. If you look very carefully, you'll see that these washers come up above the lip on the mounting plate, which means as I screw this in, it is going to grab that theremin and that extra thickness is going to really tighten against these two post holes. Now once you have that done, that should be very, very secure. And here's what I recommend, just as I recommended with the Clara box. Once you have it tightly secured to the bottom of the theremin, leave it there. And what you end up with is this. And all you do is put the microphone stand into that central post, and this is already secure. So here I am back at the Etherwave now with the addition of those rubber washers put into that mic stand adapter mounting plate. The stability of the machine is far greater. There's still a tiny bit of play, but that's kind of to be expected. Nothing like there was before, as you can see. So that's the solution for securing this as tightly as you can to a mic stand. That's it for now.